Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started, I do want to encourage you, as you're making your travel plans uh, for uh, the holidays, remember johnnydollarair.com. johnnydollarair.com is a Priceline affiliate, so you get all of the benefits of shopping through Priceline.com, uh, such as being able to name your own price on hotels, rental cars, airline tickets, and even more, or choosing from great published fares. Plus, part of your purchase price goes to support the great detectives of old-time radio at no additional cost to you. Uh, so remember, when uh, making your travel plans, uh, check johnnydollarair.com first. Well, now, from June 22nd of 1958, it's time for today's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The title is The Virtuous Mobster Man. From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hiya there, Johnny. This is your old pal, Lefty. Lefty? Well, sure. You remember. Lefty Stemper. Huh? You know, down here in Virtue. Virtue? V-I-R-G-U. Virtue. South Carolina. Oh, sure. Yeah. You remember. Me and the boys, we occupy this caraway plantation yeah. down here on the P.D. River. Well, sure, of course. Listen, are you having trouble again with old man Caraway? Oh, no, sir. Not a bit. And you know how we stopped them, me and the boys, from making trouble for us? Oh, Lefty. We bought them out, that's how. <laughs> yeah, we give them 100 G's for the place, cash money. Now we own a whole entire plantation. Well, good for you. But now what's your problem? Well, Johnny, we fixed this place up real nice since you've seen it. You know, we spent a lot of dough on it. So? So we want to buy a lot of new insurance on it. Oh, well then hop on over to Georgetown and see your old friend Joe Picatello about it. Old friend, huh? After all, he's your insurance agent. Yeah, is he? Well, sure, of course he is. Didn't he send you all the other insurance you... Lefty, has something happened to Joe? Yeah, only I don't know what it is. What do you mean? Well, that's just it. I don't know. I, I talked to him on the phone, asked him to come out here. He says, okay. But he don't come. You think somebody's knocked him off? Then I call him again. He says, okay again. He'll be right over. But he still don't come. Well, have you gone over to Georgetown to see him, to see what's the matter? Five, six, maybe even half a dozen times. But every time he ain't there. Lefty, I don't get it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. There's something wrong about it, Johnny. And if I was you, I'd come down here and find out. You know something? I think you're right. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Continental Insurance Company Home Office, New York, New York. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the virtuous mobster matter. Expense account item one, $7.85, train to New York City and taxi to the office of Continental Insurance Company. Fortunately, my contact there, Ben Orloff, was in. Come in, Mr. Dollar, come in. Thanks. How are you? Sit down. Thanks. Now, Mr. Orloff... Wait a minute. Uh, Don't tell me you never received that check for your services down in South Carolina. Oh, yes, I got that. Why, I I had that mailed out to you nearly two months ago. Yes, I said I got it. I, Eh? uh... Oh, oh, Good. Incidentally, I thoroughly enjoyed your report on that case. The village of Virtue matter, you called it? Uh, yes, So why a group of ex-gangsters should decide to settle in a town called Virtue, I'll never understand. Well, they... Were they really behaving themselves, as your report indicated, or had they been using that old plantation for a sort of hideout? Their records have been cleaned down there for over 20 years now. Is that so? Well... <laughs> well, uh, maybe the answer to organized crime is to give all those fellows a nice, quiet plantation to live on. Yes. Though I must say that when our agent down there, Joseph Picatello... It's about Joe that I've come to talk I to. must say that I was a bit concerned when I found Joe had sold policies to characters like Lefty Stemper and Bully Magoon and Flippy Lacker. Mr. Orloff... Why, those were the very sort of men that Thomas E. Dewey chased out of New York when he was D.A. some years ago. Mr. Orloff... That was before Dewey became governor, you know. So naturally, I... Uh, 
What were you going to say about Joe Picatelli? Have you heard from Joe recently? No, no, I don't think I have now that you mention it. Because I just Why? talked over the phone. Wait. You must understand one thing, Mr. Dollar. Oh, what's that? Our office down there in Georgetown is probably the smallest one we have in the whole country. Joe really doesn't handle much business for us, you know. Yes, I understand. I understood that when I talked to him in April. If it weren't for those those mobsters over in Ex-mobsters, Virtue... mobsters Mr. Orland. Well, if it wasn't for them and some of the townspeople to whom we've issued policies, I'd... Mr. Dollar... Has something happened to Joe Picatello? That's what I want to find out. Because now that I think about it... Excuse me. Miss Bailey? Yes, Mr. Orloff? Did you ever get a reply on the Harmon policy from Mr. Picatello in our Georgetown office? No, sir. I've written Mr. Picatello several times now. Thank you. Dollar, we wrote Joe about that Harmon matter over four weeks ago. Well, didn't it occur to you to phone him and find out why he hasn't answered you? But it involves such a small policy that... Uh, yes. Perhaps I'd better try to call him. Miss Bailey? Wait. Yes? Uh, nothing. What? I said nothing. Well, Mr. Dollar? Well, Mr. Orloff, if something has happened to Joe Picatello... Well, look, instead of spreading the alarm, how about if I quietly run on down there? But have you reason to believe something wrong has happened to him? Only from what his clients down there at the plantation have told me over the phone. You... You think perhaps some of his old gangland enemies have got to him? After 20 years? I don't know. But if you'll okay my expense account, I'll go down there and see. Well, now, Mr. Dollar... And if you won't, I'll go down there anyway. But there's the danger, too. This might be a very dangerous... Let me... Let me hear from you as soon as you can, Mr. Dollar. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Oh, Donald, it's your pouring, isn't it? Can you see all right? Oh, yeah, I can see. Those windshield wipers are operating with mechanical perfection. You notice there are no more streaks either since I put on the new rubber blade. You know, I think every driver should have his windshield wipers in good order. It's much safer. It would be much safer if everyone would slow down during wet weather like my husband is doing right now. <laughs> Just being cautious, Reba. We don't want an accident in this downpour. We don't want an accident any time. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, the experts say that accidents just don't happen. Something causes accidents, and that cause can be prevented. Uh, by the way, dear... In what kind of weather do you think most accidents occur? Oh, I'd say in rain or snowy weather or slippery weather when visibility is impaired. That's the wrong answer, dear. Wrong? Are you you serious? Statistics show that eight out of ten accidents occur when the weather is clear or with a cloudy overcast. Hmm. Are you positive? I wonder why. Oh, here's our house here. Oh, yeah. Now... You sit right here, Reba. I'll get out with the umbrella, and then I'll come around and open your door. All right, honey. I wonder why. Wonder why what? Why eight out of ten accidents happen in clear weather. Oh, well, I don't know for sure, Sergeant. But I do know that you drove very carefully tonight in the rain. Thanks. (laughs) Now, if everyone drove as carefully during clear, dry weather, there'd be less accidents, I'm sure. Hey, that must be it. People automatically get cautious in the rain and snow. Hmm. Too bad they don't stay that way in good weather. You will, won't you? I mean, drive safely in good weather, too? I promise. Oh, oh, that's my Donald. That's my doll. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Virtuous Mobster Matter. Expense account item two, $28 even, transportation and incidentals, New York City to Georgetown, South Carolina. It was late when I pulled into the prosperous little southern community, and it was dark, pitch dark. Item three, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. Item four, 70 cents for a sandwich and a Coke at an all-night diner. Then I drove over to Joe Picatello's on a side street near the park. The small frame building that served as both office and living quarters for Joe was dark. But in the hope he might be asleep in his little apartment up above, I knocked. answer. Until I was about to turn and go back to my car, there was the sound of a door slamming somewhere inside, but still no light showed. I knocked again. 
<laughs> then, faintly, I heard footsteps approaching. But why hadn't Joe turned on a light in there? Yeah? What do you want? Joe! Yeah? Joe, open up. It's Johnny Dollar. Johnny who? Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator, you know. Investigator? That's what you said? Are you kidding? What's the matter with you, pal? Open up. Yeah. Sure. Hiya, Joe. What's the idea of no lights in here? You forget to pay your bill or something? Maybe. What do you want? What? Investigator, you said, Willie. Did you hear that? Willie? Yeah, I heard. Hey, what is this? Don't move. Huh? Oh, oh no, you don't. Oh. All right, Willie, I got his gun. I hit him again. Yeah. Again. Once more. Okay, okay. There he is. I'd like a light. Yeah. What do you want I should do with him now? Huh? You crazy, Willie? You mean you don't know? Okay, but if I blast him here, it's going to make a lot of noise. And if anybody... Yeah. Hey, it's a car coming down the street. Investigator, he said. So he wouldn't be working alone. Come on, out the back way. But I know who's going Shut to up, stay I'm here. Shut up, get out of here. I don't, I don't see no lights on, Lefty. Well, maybe Joe's went to bed, if he's there. He didn't answer the phone when you called him. Listen, Flippy, Johnny Dollar told me I should come down here and look for Joe myself. So come on, we'll see. Well, whatever you say, Lefty. Only I th- thought that uh, Johnny was coming down here himself to... Huh? Hey, look, this door's open. Yeah, yeah you, you look what, what, what I stepped on. Joe. Joe, what happened to you? That, that, that ain't Joe. It's, it's Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Hey, you're right, Flippy. Somebody must... Listen, again away. Oh, Johnny. Johnny. <sighs> Johnny, it's me. It's me, Lefty. Lefty? And me, 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 Flippy. Johnny, okay? You all right? Yeah, I... Oh, holy fuck. Who oh, that, that done this to you, Johnny? Yeah, we'll murderize him. Hey, Flippy, turn on some lights. Yeah, yeah, sure. What the hell happened in here? You know who done this to you, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? It, it was... Oh, hey, come here, Flippy. Help me lay him up on the sofa. Sure, sure, easy, easy. Yeah, easy, easy, yeah. Sure. Here, here now. Yeah. Oh, I know. Johnny, listen to me. Who, Johnny? Who? Yeah, 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 Johnny. I can't believe it, but uh, I could see him in the light from the street. Who? Who? Joe. What? Joe Pigatello. Smokey Pigatello done this to you? Another guy with him. Called him Willie. Willie the Lump? Why? Why did he do it? I don't know. I could... Very strange when he came to the door. But I don't get it. He was my pal. He was your pal. And, well, Willie, the lump with him. That, that, that's what I don't get. It means he's went back. That's what it means. He's went back to the old racket, dope smuggling. No, no, no. Yeah, him and Willie the lump was partners in the old days. Well, but for 20 years, Joe's b- b- been straight, Lefty. L- like you and me and Bully Magoon. Yeah, for 20 years, you and me and Bully, the only guns we ever used was for hunting, for killing snakes. Not no more. What do you mean, Lefty? Joe Pigatello done this to you, Johnny. It means only one thing. There's only one thing we can do. No. He's right, Johnny. No, no, Lefty. Yeah, Johnny. First we take you back to the plantation where you get all right no, again. No, no, listen to me. Then we Lefty. find Joe Pigatello. Flip and bully and me. No. And when we do... Huh? Well, now, what are you punks doing here, huh? Hey. <laughs> Joe. That's right. Who'd you expect? And what's the big idea? All right, don't move. Because, Joe, I'm going to blast your head off. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Do you know who said, Every individual in society has certain powers, rights, and privileges which no other individual can justly abridge or destroy. Those words were written by Noah Webster the man who compiled America's first great dictionary. Mr. Webster knew that if the country which he had seen come into being were to succeed, the rights of the individual have to be protected. 
Each person is entitled to certain basic rights, powers, and privileges which must not be taken away because of the whim of someone with greater power. In the United States, the individual is important regardless of his wealth, power, or position. The importance of the individual is closely linked to the American tradition. Remember the words of Noah Webster. They are part of your American heritage. The rights and privileges of the individual must be preserved. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Virtuous Mobster Matter. To say the atmosphere was tense there in Joe Picatello's office in Georgetown, South Carolina, would be the understatement of the week. After the beating I'd taken from the ex-gangster and one of his pals, my old friends Lefty and Flippy had come in and found me there. And they couldn't understand why Joe had done this to me. Unless... It means he's went back. That's what it means. Went back to the rackets. Oh, Willie, the lump was with him. Him and Willie was partners in the old days. Dope, not So the two of them swore to get Joe. And then suddenly we looked up to see someone standing in the doorway. It's Joe. It was Joe Picatello. That's right. Now, who'd you expect? It went All right, right, don't move. Because, Joe... I'm going to blast your head off. Oh, now put that thing down, Lefty. Don't move. What is it, Slippy? A gag or something? Is it a gag what you've done to Johnny Dollar? Huh? Johnny. I said one move and I'll give it to you. Johnny. Turn around, Joe, or I'll shoot you in the back, you dirty... What did they do to you, Johnny? Listen, Joe. Lefty. Slippy, I'll kill you for this. What are you talking about, you dirty rat? Wait, Lefty. Johnny's my pal. Like you used to be before you went back in the rackets. Went back in the rackets? Yeah, yeah, with that uh, dope hound with Willie the Lump. What do you know about Willie the Lump? Plenty. Now that you're back with him. You're crazy. It's no good, Joe, because Johnny recognized you. You and Willie the Lump when you waked him over. Can I tell you that I had... 20 no... years, you and Bully and Flippy and me, we showed we could do it straight. We could be respectable. Me and the boys at the plantation, you down here. But now you're spoiled. You're ruining it for all of us. Look, will you listen? So don't move. We made a deal. You and me and the boys. 20 years ago. If anybody slips, anybody breaks up our respectable life, he got to go. Was that the deal? Yeah, yeah, that was the deal. But you don't know what you're talking about when you say I'm going back All to right, the... so you, your lousy scum, you not only go back, you do this to Johnny Dollar. My friend, the guy who Lefty, believed in us. Lefty. So for that, you got to go. Lefty, listen. Now, Joe. Right. Lefty. Give me your gun, Lefty. No, Johnny. That, that, that was the deal. You ever use a gun on a man, you'll go up for the rest of your life. Johnny, it's for you. I'm killing him. Hand it over, Lefty. Okay, thanks. You see, it it wasn't Joe who worked me over. Why? I thought it was. It, it looked like him. It, it sounded like then him. Then it was him. Look at his hands, his face, his clothes. Is this the man I fought with in here five minutes ago? Sure, maybe I did get the worst of it with two of them on top of me. But believe me, I cut them up some, too. He's right, Lefty. Yeah. Yeah, but then I don't... Look, if it wasn't him... The twin. The twin. You're right, Lefty. It must be the twin. The, the twin here? All right, boys. Let me in on it, too, yeah, will you? Shep Larko, the twin they call him. That's what the law called him. Call him and Joe, the twins. Because they looked like each other. They talked like each other. <laughs> they was always the alibi for each other. But, but, but what's Shep Larko doing here? I, I... I can't tell you, Flippy. Not yet. All right, Joe. And I believe you about not working over Johnny here because of what he says about, well, about you and me, it must up. But if you and Shep are back in the rack... I'm not, Lefty. That's straight. No. All right, then tell me. Where you been? I, I, I can't tell you. Three, four weeks now, we don't know where you are. The insurance company don't know where you are. Well? I, I can't tell you. Now, now listen. Oh, uh, you listen. You listen. If Shep and Willie have been here, they'll be coming back. Why? Yeah, Joe, why? I can't tell you. I, I, I can't tell you. Huh? All right. Listen. We're listening, Joe. The, the Secret Service. Huh? Well, after those killings up in Baltimore. During that smuggling job? Yeah, Johnny. They knew the twins, Shep Locker and Willie. Well, the boys in Washington knew they did it. But they didn't know where to find them. Well, go on, Joe. So they spread the way. Uh, the Secret Service spread the way. Yeah. That I knew where Shep and Willie were. That, that I would lead them to him. You knew where they was, huh? No, but the law boys knew that would flush them out. Get Shep and Willie out looking for me. Gunning for me. And the Secret Service didn't keep you undercover? Yeah, until today, back in Washington. But I talked to you on your phone right here. Oh, the line was rigged through to Washington. 
You said until today, Joe. Yeah, because Shep and Willie didn't show. The law boys had to make them show. So then they sent you here as living bait? Yeah. And they passed the word that you'd be here? That's it, Johnny. That's why Shep and Willie were waiting here when you came. That's why they'll come back now that I'm here. Boy, if you stuck your neck out for the sake of going straight. I couldn't help myself. The, the Secret Service rigged it on me. Guy named Phillips. But now you're all in it. So, Flippy, turn out the light. Yeah, and let's get out of here. Oh, no. What? Oh, listen, we was crooks, but never killers. But it's killers that's coming to get Joe. What do you mean, Lefty? But they won't. And they won't get you, Johnny. Sorry, Lefty, I can't move. Then we're staying. For you and Joe. Yeah, right. So turn out the lights, Flippy. You're too late, boy. Shep! The, the twin! That's right. Your old pal, Shep Larko. Keep a rat on him, Willie. Don't worry, Shep. Investigator, huh, Dollar? Only a secret service, ain't it? Is it? I knew we should have killed you when we had you, Dollar. But we thought these boys driving up was reinforcements. Ha! <laughs> reinforcements. We should have known the Secret Service wasn't that bright. All right, Willie, frisk him while I keep this gun on him. Sure. No, none of you trying to... Not Dollar. We got his gun. Oh. Okay. Just what do you intend doing, Shep? They're clean, Shep. What do you think? All right. Joe gets it first. Put your gun up close so it don't make no noise. Go ahead, Willie. Yeah. <laughs> You got them both. And I thought you couldn't move. Yeah, but boy. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks. Thank Lefty for giving me his gun when I asked for it, Joe. Oh. Hey, look. Any of you guys know a good doctor? Yeah, I've said it before and I say it again. In this insurance business, you never know what you'll run into. Expense account total, including a flock of medical expenses and the trip back to Hartford, $174 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Gene Tatum, Jack Crucian, Les Tremaine, Billy Hallop, Frank Gerstel, and Gil Stratton, Jr. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. Johnny Dollar has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, as soon as I saw the title, I was uh, expecting a sequel, and uh, I was not uh, disappointed at all. Um, And really, it does continue to be the great accomplishment of Jack Johnstone with uh, Bob Bailey as Johnny Dollar to um, create... A, uh, a a a uh, world and a continuity of uh, recurring characters that are likable and interesting, and it's a very unique feature, as I've said a lot of times. But uh, it's just incredibly uh, special about the show because uh, it it does bring out the character of Johnny in terms of wanting to give these uh, ex gangsters a uh, full benefit of the doubt and uh, to really uh, stand by them. And just how, even in a short time, Johnny uh, uh, engenders this sort of uh, loyalty. Uh, The evil twin plot is, uh, of course, very uh, cliched, but it's well executed. And overall, it's just a great story, and I was glad to uh, return for another uh, visit to Virtue. All right, well, listener comments and uh, feedback. And we have a comment on episode uh, 1675, The Wayward River Manor. Um, who, and uh, this uh, first one comes from Debbie, who says, Hi, Adam, just finished listening to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, The Wayward uh, River Manor, episode 1675. Uh, loved it. Being born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, and hearing all those references to familiar places was awesome. Then the story uh, going down to Route 20 three to Ch- uh, Chakotay and Jackson. I still have the fa- family living in Jackson. Of course, the Ohio River is further south from there, but hey, still a great, uh, great story. Thanks for sharing your personal reasons for liking this episode. Congrats uh, to marrying a fellow Buckeye. Well, thanks so much uh, for your uh, comment, Debbie. And then uh, Johnny Barber says, Johnny Dollar is the man. And then we receive a tweet Brett Reed tweets in, Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is one of my favorite old-time radio shows. Uh, well, thanks so much for tweeting in. And I'll, Brett Reed, of course, is the identity of the Green Hornet. And I'll say that the Green Hornet, Brett Reed, is one of the more uh, fascinating heroes in uh, old-time radio. I've really taken to listening to Generally, I listen to one episode of the Green Hornet every week. And it's a very fascinating show. Obviously not a detective program at all. But the whole uh, use of a double identity and the double identity of the Green Hornet uh, pretending to be a crook and actually serving an end uh, of uh, defeating uh, evil and villainy. It's a very... uh, Their episodes are very unique. And so I'm definitely a huge fan of the Green Hornet. Thanks so much for the comment. Well, now we do turn. Uh, we have a comment from uh, Brian, um, who uh, writes regarding the saint, and we'll uh, include comments on the saint or Ellery Queen as we get them, since we no longer have a specific day for those uh, programs. He writes, I know this series is ending soon. To be honest, it was not the same without Vincent Price. It seemed like a totally different show. The Vincent uh, Price version was a good bit funnier, and he was more of a ladies' man. I'm I'm so glad that the series was featured on uh, Great Detectives. I would have never experienced it if not for your uh, podcast. Well, thanks so much. Um, uh, Taking the last point first, it's definitely why we do such a variety of shows. Um, we're just getting to um, Richard Diamond, which um, it was has, was a show. Uh, I think people were requesting it all the time at the beginning of the series. You know, when are we going, uh, Great Detectives, when are we going to get to Richard uh, Diamond? But we've thought out a lot of um, um, 
programs that uh, people hadn't necessarily heard of, and to mix those with those that are perhaps the, the better known. And so we're glad to introduce people to a variety of shows, things like Barry Craig and uh, a Saint as well. I do think there had been some shift in the writing and tone of the series in the last few uh, Vincent Price programs. And personally, I do prefer Price, but um, I do think that uh, Tom Conway did grow on me a bit. I'd be happy if the Lost episodes were found for either seer, um, either uh, show. Uh, finally, we have a new review in the iTunes store for the app. D. Cowgill writes, This is a great app. It has a lot of shows and a great variety. It is uh, great fun to listen to those ra uh, radio shows. They are most inter uh, more entertaining than most of TV and some current internet programs. I've re recommended this to several people who said thanks. Great for variety of uh, programs, fun to listen to. Well, thanks so much. Definitely appreciate you uh, getting the app and recommending it to your friends. And uh, that will do it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with Dragnet. And then join us back here next Friday, another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Monday of next week, we welcome uh, Michael Shane and Tuesday, Hearthstone of the Death Squad. In the meantime, send your comments, Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives.